Hello everyone. So welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, we are going to tell you about a very important interview questions that is frequently asked in software testing interviews, like what are your roles and responsibilities as a software tester? What are your roles and responsibilities as a manual tester? So we have already covered video. If fun, if anyone is working as an automation testing, then what would be their roles and responsibilities? And then this video, we would be covering more about manual testing activities. Now, this is a sure shot interview question that would come to you because they want to understand whether you are actually working in the real time companies or not, because many of the people have been applying with fake experience also. So this question will help them to discriminate between the person who is actually working in a company as a software tester or who is just coming up with a fake experience. So it, it becomes very important to answer this question in detail. So they might also ask you, how do you start your day? They might ask you, what are the different activities that you do as a software tester? What are your roles and responsibilities? So all these things we will be covering in this particular video. So please watch till the end because all these activities are supposed to be done by you and these need to be explained in an interview also. Now, many a times we do all such kind of activities, but we fail to explain them in an interview. So in this video, we will be covering this particular question. And in order to help you, in order to help the community, we have come up with a digital product on this. So this is a digital product in which you can get a single shot of what are the different roles and responsibilities of a manual tester, right? And it is at a very affordable cost, right? So you can also purchase this product and please don't forget to give the positive rating and a testimonial on the top mate as well. So now let's deep dive into this particular question. What are the roles and responsibilities as a software tester? Okay, so as a software tester, how will you start your day? So the very first thing that you would be doing is you would be going through your emails. You will be opening the email account and you will be uh, going through the various emails that you would have received from the defect management tool. When I say defect management tool, that means you would have raised few of the defects and now those defects would have been fixed or some developer would have asked uh, some more detailed explanation. So they would have commented. So you would get those kind of emails. So you will check those things. Right. Also, there might be an email from your QA lead or QA manager that you are supposed to work on this particular task today on priority. So that is also one of the aspect. Okay. Then the first meeting that you will have. So as we are working in the agile methodology, so the daily sync up call in the daily sync up call, you would tell them which are the different user stories on which you are working today, which are the different user stories that you had worked yesterday. And apart from that, you would be telling them about uh, any user story or any uh, Jira ticket for which you are waiting to start testing. So if it has not been deployed yet or you haven't received the build, so you will communicate those things in the daily sync up call, right? So many a times they will ask you what are the different meetings so over there. You have to tell daily sync up call grooming meeting. So we'll come to those things, any challenges that you have so that you will be explaining them in a daily sync up call itself. Then requirement grooming and analysis. What does requirement grooming and analysis means? So now there will be a separate calls that you would be taking apart with the development team, the business analysts, the project, project managers, product owners. It depends from company to company, from team size to size, which different parties are taking part in that requirement grooming and analysis. Now in this particular meeting, what happens is a tester needs to understand what are the expectations from that user story? What are the different acceptance criteria that has been chalked out in that particular user story. And these user stories are created in Jira tool or any other project management tool. So as a software tester, you would be going through those particular acceptance criteria along with the team members. You would be discussing them. Okay, this particular user story might be impacting the compatibility. This particular user story might be having this kind of integration scenarios. So those kind of brainstorming would be happening in this particular requirement analysis meeting right then test estimation so now as a software tester it becomes very important for you that you have to estimate a user story you have to communicate with your leads with your managers or maybe if it's a small team then you might be directly communicating with the business analyst that how much time would you need 
to test this particular user story end to end. Now, when I say time required, so this also includes the test design. So test case designing, test data creation, right? All these things, all the various activities that you will take part as a, uh, as a part of testing, as a part of software testing that you would be including in the test estimation. Test estimation does not need just test case execution, right? For example, you might be executing one test cases. No, it also includes all the activities starting from scratch. So when I say from scratch, so you might be using some techniques to write those test cases. Then uh, you might be uh, creating test data. You might be creating expected result, actual results. So all those test case writing, all the testing activities, how much time would you take to test this user story? If it is, needs to be tested on multiple browsers, then accordingly you need to give time. If it needs to be, for example, tested with multiple user roles, for example, there might be one uh, super admin role, there might, might be one non-admin role. So how much time would you take to test this user story that you need to explain. Test estimation, right? Then test case design and creation. So when I say test case design and creation, so how many test cases would you write? And when you are writing test cases, it also needs to be updated in the requirement traceability matrix. So what is requirement traceability matrix? So it's a kind of a document in which you will be making a bridge between the requirements and the test cases. So you will be mentioning your test case IDs or scenario IDs with the RTM, with the requirement IDs, those are there. So you would be updating requirement document, right? Then test planning, test case designing, test data creation, creating of the test data for validation and testing, right? Then what needs to be done is, uh, if, if you need to test it with various uh, users, with various uh, uh, projects, then those kind of test data needs to be created. So those are the aspects that you will cover in the test case design and creation, right? Then test cases review and update. So if you are a QA engineer or software tester, then your test cases might be getting reviewed by your QA leads or senior set testers, which are there in your team. If you are actually working as a senior tester, then your uh, responsibility is to review the test cases of the, your peer team members or your junior team members, right? Then you will validate, you will get your test cases reviewed. It would be validated whether the test data that you have created that is proper. Apart from that, from those review meetings, if any test cases needs to be added, for example, you might would have covered only happy part test cases. You might not have covered the negative test cases. So those kind of review meetings will help you to cover the negative test cases as well. You will have to update those test cases based on the feedback that you receive. It might happen that you might not be, uh, you might not have added non-functional test scenarios, test cases in your test cases. You might would have added just functional test cases. So those things need to be covered, right? And then test case execution. So you would be executing the test cases in the various environments. For example, in some companies, in some projects, they might be testing on test environment. In some companies, they might be testing on staging. In some companies, they might be testing on UAD and they might be doing a high level on production environment. So those are different environments, alpha environment, beta environment, right? On which the test cases execution is being carried out. Again, test case execution includes all the statuses like pass, fail, you might not be able to complete all the test case execution in the one day in one go. So that status would be work in progress. If any test case is in fail status, then what would happen is you will assign a defect to the respective developer and you will update your test cases with a defect ID over there, right? So that is one of the test case execution. In the second cycle of the execution, that defect might get passed. So multiple test cycles that you would be creating. So that is nothing but that is test case execution itself, right? So you would be updating test cases. You would be ensuring that 100% test cases are executed in the desired environment. You will update the test case with fail status if any defect fails. If you are doing mobile testing, you might be uh, testing using simulator, emulator. So those kind of aspects you need to cover in the test case execution. And then defect reporting and regression testing. So now as we were discussing, if anything, if any of the defect gets failed, then what would happen is, so if any defect would get failed, then you will have to coordinate, you will have to collaborate 
if any test case gets failed and you create the defect, then you will have to collaborate. You will have to coordinate with the development team, right? And you will have to give them detailed level of steps so that they are also able to reproduce the issue. They are able to find the root cause analysis and they are able to fix those kind of problems, right? So that is very important. And apart from that, you would be doing regression testing, right? Regression testing is very important that needs to be done. Right. Then regression testing. So you will be also doing regression testing along with retesting so that uh, the defects that have got fixed does not impact the existing functionalities. Then defect triaging. Then you will be coordinating with project managers, business analysts. So all these things, again, you might be scheduling a dem demo, internal demos with the team to ensure that uh, everything that has been tested is working fine. Everything that needs to be that is being mentioned in the acceptance criteria of the user story is working absolutely fine. So those kind of small demos, uh, sprint demos, you can uh, give a walkthrough to some particular, uh, to your team leads, to your uh, QA managers. You might be giving demos to the stakeholders in the product-based company. So that's how you will be discussing with the project managers, business analysts, what all things have been tested and you will be concluding on the defects to be targeted for the release defect rising meeting will also you might be a part of defect rising meeting also in which those important defects which are to be fixed you would ensure that those are fixed before the release is done if you don't if the team does not has bandwidth in the current sprint then you would be discussing with the team development team project managers business analyst when it needs to be taken so as a qa manager you might be planning those defects if you are an individual tester then you will highlight those kind of important issues to be fixed with your qa manager with your qa lead right so that becomes a uh, variety to variety and it depends on how many years of experience you have right so that is a call that needs to be taken right then retesting ad hoc testing right so you would be performing retesting of the defects those have been fixed you would be performing ad hoc testing right so this is actually a 14 to 15 pages of document that would give you a brief idea of what actually a software tester does right and it's a paid document but again the amount that you need to pay for this document for this digital product is too less right and this offer is valid for 24 hours so if you are watching this video or if you are coming across this document or digital product for first 24 hours then this will be the price but after 24 hours then it will be increased right so if you want to give this answer in the software testing interview and if you want to ensure that you get clear you are able to clear the testing interviews, you are able to get a job as a software tester, then this is a document for you because roles and responsibilities of a software tester, of a manual tester are very important. And as a software tester, you should know what are your roles and responsibilities and you should be able to explain also in an interview, right? So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, the intent behind keeping this digital products is not to make any sort of big business, but it is to help the YouTube community. So thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates.